How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm doing all right. Hello, good morning. <laughs> good morning. How's things? Pretty good. I can't complain. Uh, things are pretty good. How are things on your end? Uh, not too bad. Could be worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they always could be worse, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like on the bright side, I suppose. <laughs> That's right, exactly. Are you ready to get stuck into this again? Yeah, for sure. Totally ready. Hopefully technology's on my side this time. I've got camera, <laughs> this is recording, so hopefully one of them will work. So All good. first is Scratch. What's the history in that one? So, oh man, Scratch was, <clears throat> that was actually um, the last song that we wrote uh, before we went to go record uh, Last Stop Suburbia. And so if I remember correctly, we, we actually met up at our drummer Dave's house, like the day before we were supposed to leave, mm -hmm. um, to go out to California to record the album. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to get in like one more practice session. Um, and our, our guitar player at the time, John was like, Hey, I've, I have this idea for a new song. You know, it's, I think it's pretty good. And we're like, okay, well let's jam it. Let's try it out. We'll see what yeah. happens. And, um, and so he showed it to us and we were like, this is really cool. Like <laughs> this has to go on the record. Yeah. And so we like literally within, I don't know, probably 30, 40 minutes, he showed it to us. We jammed it and we had a brand new song and we liked it so much. It ended up being the first track on the so, record. Uh, just the chances of like the last one being the first one. And the yeah. Big it was, I mean, it was just so like, it was just such a random thing, you mm -hmm. know, like it just kind of happened that way, which is cool. That it worked out. Oh, awesome. I keep forgetting how much John actually had a part in this album. I always think he left before it, but like going over, yeah. it, I was like, oh my God, he was like a huge part of the album. Yeah, he did. Um, you know, he wrote a few of the songs on that record. And I, the, you know, the thing with John too, was that him, him and I collaborated a lot on songs mm -hmm. um, in songwriting. Yep. Um, I mean, I did too with Scotty. But I think at the beginning, more so, it was John and myself, since him and I were kind of the ones that started the band together. Um, we were the ones that did a lot of the the songwriting. And so I think you kind of hear that throughout the record. You know, I think you kind of hear John's influence in some of my songs and like my influence in some of John's and, you know, vice versa. Uh, we crossover kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And next up is Radio Player. This is one of your ones, I think. Yeah. Um, so this was a radio player was was interesting because there's a, a little bit of a story behind um, radio player and overrated, the song overrated, and then the song somewhere on Fullerton. Yeah. So those those three songs were all written like within the span of like an hour and a half. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was just yeah which is it's so weird and I was just kind of sitting in my basement I didn't have anything to do and I was just playing my guitar through I had like this really crappy Fender guitar through a really shitty Fender amp and I was it was just me and like a six pack of beer and I was just writing some <laughs> songs and like literally those three songs were like the three that came out all in a row which is crazy because oh. You know, I think those are some of like our more popular songs. Yep. At the time, we didn't we didn't know that. You know, it was just another song for mm -hmm. us, and it was like, hey, I had this idea. It's pretty cool, and everyone really liked it. Yeah. But that's kind of how Radio Player came came to be. It, and and I should say too, I was listening to a lot of um, the Mar this band called the Marvelous Three mm -hmm. at the time. And I, I I wanted to try to write a song like Marvelous Three or like Butch Walker kind of, um, and I think that's kind of what what came out. That song. and it worked. <laughs> it did, yeah. I think it worked okay. Uh, next up, Fly Paper. This is one of Scotty's, I think. Yeah, Scott or Scott wrote this one, um, and I remember he he had this idea. Um, I think he even had this idea when we recorded our very first album, uh, Dead Ends and Girlfriends. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't it wasn't like fully kind of hashed out. Yeah. Um, so it didn't go on that record. And then 
we kind of worked on it and you know we played it a bunch of times and worked through it and finally got to a point where we liked the arrangement of it and yeah. we're like okay this works this is this is pretty good mm -hmm. um and i like it because it's kind of one of those uh I, one of the things that scotty and i liked to do is kind of do like like call and response vocals or like sort of alternating vocals at the yeah. same time and i think that song kind of does that in the chorus sort of features some Definitely. of that a little bit yep. um, which i think is cool as a bonus of having two vocalists, the ones that you don't really want to do, just pass it off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're both lucky enough to be able to sing okay. Yeah, so <laughs> he's can pull it off. <laughs> Next one's overrated. Uh, yeah, so overrated was another one of those. Uh, like I said, that was in that that group of three that kind of got written really quickly, you mm -hmm. know, um, and. You know that I, I think it's pretty obvious what that song is about, yeah. um, at least for me, anyways. You know, at, at the time, we, you know, I think there was this notion back in the the early days of like, you know, punk rock, where mm. if bands signed to a record label that was bigger, they were quote unquote sellouts. Yeah, you know, like Green like, Day in '86. <laughs> Yeah, and and we, you know, I mean, we we came from that community, so we struggled with that a little bit. We didn't know what we should really do, um, yeah. and that the, this song sort of addresses that, and and also addresses just just the weirdness of the re of the record industry and record labels in general, um, mm -hmm. and how it's it, it it can at times seem very fake. Yeah. Um, and very pretentious and just not always exactly what we were kind of hoping for, I think, yeah. as a band. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's just kind of what this song is, is about a little bit. I always remember this song getting like the hardest reactions it shows. Like everyone just went crazy for this song. That and Summer and Fullerton, I think, were like the two main ones where everyone just- Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And I mean, I think there's something to be said too, you know, as, as, <laughs> as great as it was to tour and to be on the road in, in playing music for people every day, look, it's by far the best job in the world. Yeah. But there are elements, I think, of that that do get overrated a little bit. And I think people look at it and think, oh my gosh, how, how could anybody not like this? Yeah, You know, it's like with any any job or like anything that you do mm -hmm. all the time, there, there are parts of it and pieces of it that you wish maybe a little bit different, you know, yeah, or might everyone, be slightly overrated. Yeah, I think everyone thinks it's like a luxurious lifestyle being in a band, but when you're like yeah. four guys stuck in a band for months on end, <laughs> it can it can be rough. But yeah, yep. yep. oh, I bet <laughs> I don't envy that part at all. Uh, that <laughs> one's better late than forever. Yeah, so this is another. Um, another of John's songs. Um, and if I remember correctly, so th th this is a song that John had pretty early on in the band. Um, and I think he, he may have even had it when we recorded Dead Ends and Girlfriends, but it just didn't quite make the cut or it wasn't quite ready to be recorded at that time. Um, and he this song originally had completely different words to it and it was about something completely different <laughs> um and then no joke like i think it was while we were in the studio recording this song he's like i i want to change the lyrics to this song i want to i i need to make it about something else and we were yeah. like okay that's fine yeah. you know yeah. uh, and so he did and i'm glad he did because it ended up sounding better i think and i and it ended up coming together, I think, just as a song, mm -hmm. uh, even better than it than it had before. So I was kind of happy about to that. see what the other version was like, like how that would hold up now. Uh, oh man, I'm trying to remember. I, I don't <laughs> I don't recall off the top of my head like what it was about before. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was I, I think it was still about, you know, a, a relationship or yeah. something along those lines, but the words were 100% totally different. Oh. Um, so it was kind of, it took us a little while. 
What's that? It's strange how a song can completely turn, like you have one idea and then all of a sudden you just kind of veer off. Yeah. And it took us a little while, I think, to get used to it because we were, you know, we had played it so many times and heard it so many times with the other lyrics, with the original yeah. lyrics, that it took a, a while for us to get kind of comfortable with this new one. But then, you know, after a few times, it was fine. It's a catchy one. So at least it's kind of easier to remember. Yeah. Uh, next one, the one that got away. Yeah, I remember when Scotty showed us this, the idea for the song, you know, it, I think this one's pretty fast, like it's a yeah. pretty fast punk rock song. And I think we were all kind of like, can we play this fast? Like, <laughs> is this even possible for us to do this? Because we normally didn't have songs that were that fast. Just like um, none of our our, friends are punks are kind of like on par, yeah. I think, but it's so short. Exactly. So it's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so th I think that was kind of the thing, you know, with this one when we were we were playing it, you know, we were like, I think I think we could do this. Let's try. And it ended up being really cool. And our drummer Dave at the time was like had super good chops and was really fast on the drums, yeah. so he could do it no problem. Oh, it was okay. me and John and Scotty that had the problems <laughs> keeping up with one another. Yeah. <laughs> Next one is race cars. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of. Let's see, what's the story behind this song? Um, I don't know if there really is. A, Remember that. One. Yeah, I don't know if there is necessarily a story behind this song. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. I don't I don't really remember writing the song, yeah. to be honest. With you. <laughs> it was one of those ones that it, it just sort of appeared. <laughs> uh, and I don't know how it got there um, and I don't have any recollection of writing it or or really writing the lyrics um, I think at the time I was um, listening to to someone who had you know been telling stories of or some band who in their lyrics had been kind of telling stories about just life and like mm -hmm. how you know life can be difficult at times but is also you know can be a blessing yeah. um and I think that was kind of the theme I, that I sort of wanted to try to go for with this song I, I don't recall who it was that I was listening to but yeah. I vaguely have a memory of, of that oh, but it worked yeah. <laughs> it did yeah it was weird uh, matchsticks um so matchsticks I very very specifically tried to write a song like um like the Ramones <laughs> and I wanted to just write a straight up pop punk Ramones type like screeching weasel type of a song with like only three chords um and I think that's just kind of how this this song came up yeah. um you know like I said it, or this is another one of those that just kind of came together pretty quickly you know mm -hmm. I think the whole thing was probably written in like 15 minutes oh wow um and you okay, know showed it to the guys and they're like okay cool <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into that particular song it was just crank it out and get it done <laughs> just work it and see how it goes exactly next one's camouflage this is another of scots isn't it i think yeah th this is this one's up there i think with some of my favorite songs that mm -hmm. scott has written um you know be because um you know so many of our songs I think we were young and they were just about like girls or you know whatever but I think this one wrong. is the what's that relationships gone wrong <laughs> yeah but this one's a little deeper than that you know I think this one hits home a little bit more so in a, in a different type of way yeah. um and I like this one too because uh, I think there's an acoustic guitar at the beginning of this one that we mm. we, we put on there and there's like a keyboard part in the middle somewhere just like yeah little tiny things that we wanted to you know try out um mm -hmm. in the studio that, that kind of made it onto this song yeah uh, which i like you know i think it ended up working out really well because it's i think i said the last time like that was the one song that really stood out for me because i was painfully shy as a teenager and when i heard that song i was like that just sums me up so well and if people yeah are like, oh why don't you speak and i'm like listen to this song <laughs> And it kind of and that's awesome. I mean, what a cool like connection that you can have, you know, with that song. Then that's that's so cool. Definitely, it's one that I never really heard live a lot, though. I don't think he's played it an awful lot. 
Yeah, we did. There was a period uh, where we we played it fairly regularly, but that mm. was only on maybe a couple of tours. Uh, mm. And and I don't recall playing it too often, like any on any of our overseas tours, like oh. like in in Scotland or or, or the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, but it didn't. Yeah, for whatever reason, it wasn't one that always made the set list. No. Nope. And a lot of people would probably be hoping for it, but just always <laughs> slid under the radar yeah. a little. <laughs> <laughs> Next one's Don't Think Twice. Yeah, this one, um, I I remember showing Scotty the idea for this song, uh, sitting in his apartment, in his room, and I was like, hey, I have this idea for a brand new song, and I showed it to him, and he's like, man, that's really awesome. And so him and I just kind of worked out the entire thing just over the course of a day. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think it's about a girl that I was dating at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it has kind of that, if I remember right, it kind of has that sort of like a shuffle beat a little mm-hmm. bit. Um, yeah. And, you know, it was just something a little bit different, um, not just kind of your four on the floor type yeah. of punk rock song. It kind of uh, so I think it was like a slowed down Beatles song a little bit, but with like a pop punk edge, just to be kind of shuffling. Yeah, and and that's funny you say that because that's kind of exactly what Scotty said too. He oh. was like, <laughs> he's like, this reminds me a little bit of like a Beatles song, but I don't know which one. I was I like, oh, okay, that's cool. I was like, <laughs> great. Well, but I think it's a night. Nice, I think it was a, it was a good song to include on the record because mm-hmm. it it mixed things up just enough, you know, it's still, it's still a, a pop punk song, but it was just different enough to give the record a little bit more flavor. Yeah, it kind of broke it up from the usual, like, high beat kind of mm-hmm. ones. Yeah. Next one is probably, like, the one that every person knows somewhere in Fullerton. Yeah, this somehow seemed to turn into one of our bigger songs. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, you know, it's so weird. Like I said, the, the entirety, well, almost the entirety, I should say, but most of the song was written in, in like 15 minutes, you know, just me sitting around playing the guitar. So I had the entire idea for the song basically from start to finish, mm-hmm. you know, and I showed it to the guys and everybody really liked it. Um, but I do remember that I didn't, I didn't have words right away. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of those songs I had like, little bits and pieces of of like a line here or there that I thought would fit pretty well mm-hmm. um and I'll never forget this and I and I wish I still had these I don't or maybe I do somewhere but I, I don't know where they are but I ended up writing all of the lyrics to this song one night when I was out at a bar I was I was dating this girl and she took me to this this bar somewhere in Chicago and it was just I was absolutely having a miserable time um it was like one of those kind of, yeah it was like kind of one of those like dance club type of like bars or clubs and that's not my style I don't I don't dance I don't I don't do that <laughs> so I remember I remember grabbing a bar napkin and I sat at the bar like away from people and took a pen and just in was like you know there's no place I would rather be right now than the fireside bowl yeah. And I started thinking and I was like, okay, well, that's, that's where I really want to be. But, you know, there's this talk about the fact that they're going to close mm-hmm. the fireside and they're going to shut it down. There's not going to be any more shows. Yeah. And that really bummed me out. So literally that night I wrote all of the lyrics to somewhere on Fullerton on this bar napkin <laughs> that I ended up just stuffing in my pocket, taking home with me. And that's kind of how those it's lyrics like came there. <laughs> yeah, and that, and then the lyrics were done, and that was it. You had to re-record it uh, a few years ago, didn't you? Is, is it... We did, yeah. yeah. So what's really funny is there's actually three versions of that song. Wow. <laughs> so there's a version which is the very first version. I think that was on some drive-through records compilation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we recorded that. I want to say like in 2001, mm-hmm. sometime. Um. And then there's the version that's on Last Stop Suburbia. And then, like you said, there's a version that we re-recorded for kind of like our 20-year yeah. uh, Best of compilation album. Um, and then we shot a video for it at yeah. the Fireside Bowl, uh, so which is really cool. <laughs> it did, yeah, it really came 
full circle in that. And for us, that was that was kind of neat to be able to do that. And it's good um, that Kyle got to be part of that recording because he obviously wasn't in the band first. Yeah, so. yeah, it was very cool. And Mike too, for sure. Yeah. And it, it, but it's just so weird how, you know, when when the song was written, we we thought nothing of it. Like mm -hmm. literally, it was for us. It was just another song you know, yeah. that we could include on the record. And then all of a sudden it kind of took on a life of its own and seemed yeah. to be, you know, one of the more popular songs. And it was great. You know, we mm -hmm. we were super excited about that, but we also didn't, re didn't really understand why, you know, it's because there's songs that we like, that we write, that we think are better, that nobody yeah. likes, you know, and people are like, well, that's a, that's a stupid song, don't ever play that one, we're like, but that's the best one, and then we have songs like Somewhere in Fullerton that we're like, eh, we think it's fine, but, you know, all of a sudden, it's people's have to favorite play it. Yeah. Uh, next one is Westbound, and, uh, Westbound even, just, yeah. Yeah, that's another one of those um, that Scotty wrote um, mm -hmm. for this album, um, and I like it because it's um, it's kind of upbeat and it's fun and it and it it really does a pretty good job lyrically of just capturing what we did on mm -hmm. tour. You know, that's just yeah. that was our life. That's that's what we did for you know seven years or so. Yeah. Um, just constantly touring and being on the road um mm -hmm. and, and we loved it i mean we enjoyed just just about every minute of it uh it'd be hard to kind of keep going right enough with everything you'd be it must have been so tiring just constantly having to be on the road all the time it was but there's there was also something really exciting about it you mm. know because you never really knew what was around the next corner yep. you know you could you could you know end up on a big tour and then start to really build a fan base or have a really great show and mm -hmm. it makes everything worth worth it you know and we at the time we didn't really have anything at home you know we didn't have families we didn't have kids we didn't really have wives or girlfriends or whatever and mm -hmm. so for us it made the most sense to just stay on the road you know, exactly. because we we certainly didn't want to come home and work real jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it while it lasted. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Uh, next, that's know it all. Yeah, um, this is kind of another one of those uh, where the, I, the song just appeared. I don't remember writing the song at all. I remember writing the words uh, because I wrote it very specifically about one person uh, I'm not gonna say <laughs> who <person. laughs> I'm not gonna say who um but I do remember writing the words but as far as like writing the actual song mm -hmm. this might have been uh yeah I don't know it just kind of appeared it was just there one day because it's definitely one of the more angrier and faster ones compared to the rest yeah, and I and I wrote it very very specifically about one person <laughs> after an ex a couple of experiences I had with that that, that person oh. who who I would say people know who this person is. So oh, really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, uh, next one stuck. Yeah, this is a, another one of John's songs um, that he wrote probably back in the dead ends and girlfriends days. Mm. And it just didn't quite, it wasn't quite finished enough to record for dead ends and girlfriends. Um, I think but it's I would, last I would, stop suburbia better though. Than, say that again? I think it suits last stop suburbia a lot better than dead ends. I agree. And girlfriends. Yeah, I definitely agree. But I, I probably would say that if I think about all of the songs on last stop suburbia, this is probably the one that was written first. Mm -hmm. um, even though it kind of, it sort of came about, um, you know, during the Dead Ends and Girlfriends days, mm -hmm. this was the probably the first song that, you know, we knew would be on the new record. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. And I like it. It's short, it's sweet. Um, it's just kind of a cool pop punk song. You know, it's, it's very, very typical John Yep. songwriting style <laughs> and he's got to perform it in the film sleepover as well yeah yeah which is i mean that's a whole that's a whole other interview <laughs> in and of itself <laughs> we could i could talk about that forever um, but yeah that was fun i mean that was a good experience and, mm -hmm. and we did 
get to include that um, in that movie. So that was that was fun. Me and Scott had a debate once. I think it's when you guys were in Edinburgh, and we couldn't remember who sang it live. I always thought it was Scott sang it live, but he said you sang it. So we can't remember who sang it live. <laughs> it's like it's a bad sign if Scott can't remember. So. Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Um, I think Scott sang it. I thought you did as well. Does he sing it on the album or is that John that sings it? That's John. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or maybe we sw- maybe we switched off. Maybe uh, Scott sang like the first verse and maybe I sang the second verse. Uh, maybe we just mix it up a bit. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that's a good question. We'll get that, <laughs> <laughs> one of those mysteries yeah <laughs> and the last one is uh have we done waiting for you no got waiting for you still today yeah waiting for you yeah this um this is this song is kind of funny because when we so before we uh drove out to california to record this album we rented a rehearsal space for like probably two months maybe mm-hmm. maybe three months I think it was closer to two um and we rented the space so we could specifically write songs and rehearse yeah. for this new album and this song I remember very vividly was one of the ones that came out of that practice space mm-hmm. um it you know we were just kind of jamming it I had the original idea and I kind of showed the guys and you know, we kind of all made it into the, the song that it is. Yeah. Um, but I do remember that one very specifically came out of that that practice space that we mm-hmm. had for, for a month or two. That was another one that kind of got the crowd going as well, the hand clap bits at the end. Yeah, <laughs> and, and it was funny because that one, very similarly to Camouflage, like we played live for a while and then it just disappeared from our set list. And then we just didn't really play it too much again i uh, think like, for, after before the blackout a lot of like a uh, last stop suburbia kind of drifted off a wee bit you're 100 percent correct yeah, <laughs> just, all right we're done with those songs we got other stuff we got to play <laughs> yeah, like, oh, to listen to these songs again <laughs> and the last one's a little quick one none of my friends are punks so there's a funny story behind this song um <laughs> This song, no joke, the entire song and all of the lyrics were written in my head as I was driving down to visit one of my friends in college. <laughs> and it's a, it was like a three hour drive. And I s- started writing this song in my head, like within three miles of leaving my house. <laughs> and I just worked on it and worked on it in my head the whole way there. And then when I got to his house, I said, hey, give me your guitar. I got this idea for a song. And the whole thing was done. I, I played it all like in one sitting, wrote out all the words so that I had it. <laughs> um, but it was funny because I was going to visit one of my friends who, you, you know, he was like a, like a punk rock dude, yeah. played in bands and was like, was very similar to the stuff that, that I liked. Um, but I started thinking, I was like, man, he's kind of like, one of the few punk rock friends that I have left, like mm-hmm. most of my friends now are all working real jobs. You know, they're, they <laughs> yeah. might starting to be starting to have like families or whatever. I was like, man, none of my friends are punks anymore. And I was like, oh, well, that's a cool thing. line. I was like, I could use that. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what happened. Like literally for three hours, I wrote it in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Never even say hi to your friend. Just give me your guitar. <laughs> yeah. No, didn't even say hi. Just give me your guitar quick before I forget it. <laughs> so now that we're going through them all, what would probably be the standout one for you that's just always been your favorite? Um, I think for me, it's probably Radio Player mm. um, on, on the album um, because I think I wrote that one with some level of specificity like you know i think i had mentioned i was listening to that band the marvelous three and i really wanted to write a song like that Mm -hmm. um that was kind of like pop rock um but like really big chorus and really catchy um 
and I think I, I think I got it right. You know, I think I, I accomplished what I had kind of set out to yep. do, um, which is as a, you know, as a songwriter, it's kind of a good feeling, Definitely. you know, to know that, all right, I had a goal and I feel like I met it and mm-hmm. the song came out sounding pretty good. And at least like you can dust it off and be like, right, I've put everything into it and I'm actually happy with it. Cause sometimes you can yes. put all your energy into something and at the end you're like, hmm, there's something not sitting yeah. right. Yeah, very true. It came out sounding just how I wanted it. And, you know, I think it's a it's a good song uh, and people seem to like it. So yeah. I think for me, that's that's the one that 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 I usually like about this particular record. Perfect. So what's the kind of future for Alistair now that Scott's in Japan and you've got hot Alice and stuff? Is there any future for Alistair or? Oh, man, I don't know. Um <laughs> I really don't. I haven't talked to Scott in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't, you know, and with COVID, it's made yeah. things really hard to to play and practice and get together. Um, I know we would all like to probably make another album at mm-hmm. some point. Um, yeah. I know I've been writing a ton. You know, I've been doing a lot of stuff with Hot Alice, yeah. but I do have some Alistair songs that are more or less ready to go. Right. Um, that I would just have to kind of show the guys mm-hmm. um, and I you know we send demos back and forth every once in a while if we come up with an idea that that we think would work for the band right now we don't have any specific plans to do anything um Good that may change there's always something kind of set and waiting though yeah there's I mean there's always that possibility um mm-hmm. you know that especially these days when it's relatively easy for us to record Mm -hmm. um and and make a new album you know it's it's not terribly difficult um you know I think the only tricky part is finding the time you know to to get us together or to be able to to dedicate some time to do it Uh, but actually doing it isn't really too hard for us anymore yeah oh good so fingers crossed there'll be something yeah we'll see (laughs) oh well thanks very much Tim it was nice yeah of course yeah it's good to see you Stacey Yep, you too. Hope you have a good day. All right, you too. I'll let you go. See you later.